if you notice we've got the uh, the data from the example um, we've got the data from the example in the uh, textbook we've got um, in column column one we have study time column two we have the test result so this is uh, study time is the independent variable uh, test results are the, are the dependent variable and then you can see the, the data here and so to perform the regression analysis you go up to uh, stat which is the top of the menu stat regression and then you just pick the, the first one which is regression okay and okay it's asking you for two things the response variable is the dependent variable so in our case it's test results so come over here double click on test results and it pops it into the box the predictors those are the end of, that is the independent variable or if you're doing a multiple linear regression it would be uh, more than one uh, independent variable but here our, our independent variable our predictor is study time so double click that Okay, so we could we could hit OK now, and we would get the best fit best fit line equation, and the other output. But we also want to test the assumptions, and the way we do that is um, go down to graphs, and you want to pick three graphs. You want to do a histogram of the residuals, a normal plot of the residuals, and the residuals versus fits, and just hit OK. All right, couple other things. Go down to storage. Click storage and we want to have many tabs store two things for us the residuals and the fits the fits are the predicted values those are the values on the best fit line this is the fits are what we predict to happen um, at each study time alright so hit OK alright so now we're ready to run it so hit a uh, hit OK now several things are going to happen here first of all a bunch of graphs uh, three graphs are going to pop up on the screen and uh, you can see the alright so here here are the three the first one these are the histogram this is a histogram of the residuals and and it should be fairly bell shaped now this one's not perfectly bell shaped because mainly because we don't have that many data points but uh, you're just you're just looking for a really skewed picture here this isn't skewed again it's not perfectly bell shaped but nothing here really alarms me so I'm gonna I'm gonna close that graph okay this is if you remember this is the um, the residuals versus fit so the fitted values on the x-axis those are the values that are on the 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 best fit line these are the values that we predict to happen and the red dots are the residuals so each dot shows so if you remember the residual is a difference between what we observe to happen and what we predict to happen so when we look at this picture we, we don't ex we don't want to see any kind of pattern these these the, the, we should see like a shotgun blast here the dots should just kind of be all over the place just kind of randomly all over the place with no clear-cut pattern and that does seem to be the case here so this looks okay so I'm going to close that one and this is what we call a, a, a normal probability plot of the residuals. Now, this doesn't really tell you much. Um, to, to, to determine if the residuals are actually normally distributed, we have to do a normality test on the residuals. And we'll do that next. So let's, let's close this. Okay, so if you notice, now we've got two more columns. Minitab calculated the residuals and put those in column three. And then Minitab... Uh, calculated the predicted values uh, at each study time and and put that in column four so for instance at 35 hours of study time based on the best best fit line equation we predict a mean test score 55.55 percent well in this case we actually observed a test result of 60 so the difference between 60 and and 55.5541 is the residual all right, now let's do a normality test of the residuals. So you go up to stat, basic statistics. Next to the last choice is normality test. Pick that. 
and if you see the cursor is clicking in the variable box come over here and you want to double click on the res uh, i1 double click and then everything else is kind of set at a default which is good so then you hit ok alright so if you remember what we're looking for here is this p-value if that p-value is greater than 0 0.05 then we've got good evidence to say the residuals are normally distributed now this is well above 0 0.05 so this is very strong evidence to say the residuals are normally distributed so we'll clo close that alright now all we've got left to do is go up and look at the uh, the output so the output is always going to be in, in this upper box, the session window. So if you go down, there's our best fit line equation. And hopefully you recognize that from the presentations. Okay, here are our um, the p-values. If you remember, I talked about the p-value. If that p-value is less than 0.05, then that's good evidence to say that, for instance, study time is a significant factor um, in determining test results. All right, um, and then below this, we've got, uh, there's our S, which that's our standard deviation, and there's our R squared, our coefficient of determination. Okay, and, and the rest of this, you don't really. So, so I've covered most of this in the presentations, but I, I wanted to see, you, I wanted to show you how to actually get to this output in Manitab. So hopefully this was a, a good, good Manitab instruction for you.